Okay, yes, and you're perfectly centered. Wow. <laughs> I have a little experience with, uh, you know, working with the cameras. That's good. <laughs> Except that's good. prior to having it actually be operational for you. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so hi, everyone. Welcome to Heart to Heart with Art Queen. Uh, today we have a very special guest. We were very excited to have you on the show. So it's Al Kelly. Yes, she's a blizzard community manager and also a con female content creator she plays hardstone also <laughs> so uh welcome welcome try. i try <laughs> <laughs> welcome um okay. thank you thanks for having me yeah of course so first question and uh it's it's a very easy one but it's always the a very interesting one so What's up with your name? How did you come up with Al Kelly? So I get this one all the time and it's it's so silly. You know, it's like one of those things like back in the day when you create your first email or something and then you realize later you're like, oh, stuck with it, right? So it's kind of like that, but like in a good way. So I was a huge, I mean, child of the 90s, right? Because I'm like way older than chat, you guys. So, um, you know, I'd come home after school and I'd watch X-Men. You know, I'd wake up on Saturday morning, I'd watch X-Men. And I loved Jean Grey. Um, and in the animated series, um, she becomes the Phoenix. Alkali Lake. I know, I'm, I'm such a nerd, you guys. I it's out, like even when I say this out loud, I'm like it's so nerdy. But um, which is where the Weapon X facility is, you know, Wolverine. All this is cool. So I wanted to, you know, have my cosplay name be something, you know, connected to Jean Jean Grey, but more like obscure. So I came up with Alkali Lake, and here we are. <laughs> good, good. No, it, it it's very it's it's always interesting to see where it comes from because it's always like an. It's always super interesting, like with Regis, we were like, is it your real name? No, but everyone called me Regis, even my mom and my, my wife. <laughs> so does your mom that. call you Al Kelly? <laughs> does your mom? She does not, no. Um, actually, it's I, I can't say what my mom calls me because it's a combination of like my name and something okay, else. Yes, of course. But we're really Southern. And so, well, they are. <laughs> I, I would like to claim it, but I have no accent. So she puts Bug after my real name. And so, like, sometimes she'll even just call me Bug. So I'm kind of her little baby bug, you guys. Good, good. That's cute. That's cute. <laughs> okay, so let's let's start with, from the beginning. So uh, okay. when did you start, uh, like, being a content creator and what made you do like the leap of fate of like jumping into this big ocean of uh, content creation? <laughs> oh, you know, first of all, I love that you said content creation because it's something I've been trying so much harder to do instead of saying streamer or cosplayer. There, I mean, we're all so much bigger than the scope of things with everything that we do. And it's kind of a long story. I'll try to keep it brief. Um, but really this started out a long, long time ago when I was doing um, special effects makeup um, in Idaho, which doesn't have a lot of outlets you can go. So mostly it's like zombie short films or like, you know, student short films. And um, I realized I was pretty good at it. So I applied for Face Off um, and I made it pretty far into the casting. I want to say like final, I had to be final casting because I, I know how long it takes to get through interviews um, and did all the video interviews with them. And um, didn't make it the first season. Second season, I got farther and so started doing that. And then I didn't make it, which led to me trying to figure out like, well, where do these people go? Like wh when people don't win the show, where do they go? And so I realized they started going to Comic-Cons like Monster Palooza. So I decided to try to break into Comic-Cons as a makeup artist. So I approached my local Comic-Con and asked if they needed somebody to do makeup for their celebrities um, in exchange for like a little booth where I could rep myself and my brand. And so I got to do all the celebrities makeup that weekend. I, the coolest one I got to do, um, uh, I always forget his real name because it's like such a long, John Reese davies makeup and he was so fun. And a lot of other people's in exchange for that and that led it to cosplay which led to gaming which led to streaming which led to this so kind of series of events okay good and so what lead, led you to Hearthstone particularly 
the cosplay? <laughs> no, no, but kind of along the same veins of the art. Um, my um, boyfriend, now husband, actually, at the time, um, so... I was going to college full time and had a job after school, so we didn't get to see each other very often. So I would come over at night after my waitress shift, and um, I would see, I would, I always joke about it, the glow coming from under his door. Like, and not in a cool like way where he like lit candles or did something romantic, <laughs> but you know, like walking down the hall, hearing furious, like typing on the computer and I'm like, ah, oh, crap. I knew, I knew, like this is my only time I had with him, but it, he would be playing World of Warcraft. Um, so I'd have to get home and he'd say like, just to five more minutes or, you know, something like that. So <laughs> it was, and, uh, but I would wait for him to finish his game and he had these beautiful art books on his bookshelf um, from like a collector's edition series. So I'd sit there and I'd look through the books and the art and I'd wait and, um, that kind of developed my love for like wanting to ask about the game. And so we started talking to him about it and he was like, well, you, I don't think you'd like this, like ferociously typing, but you might like this other game. It's like a card game. You could totally do that. And I was like, eh. So I waited for years and I didn't play it even though he kept telling me I'd like it. And then one day I just picked it up and I played Hearthstone ever since. And that was, oh, when was that? Maybe, gosh, a lot. Not like at the beginning, but pretty early. So I started playing around, um, like Cthulhu was my first legendary that I opened because you like got it for free. So I, I've been playing since then. Okay, good, good, good. And um, so uh, if, let, since we're talking about, a bit about Hearthstone, let's, let's, let's get a bit of, about the game and the expansion. And so that leads me to which expansion was your favorite one and why? <laughs> Um, <laughs> a lot of fond memories around Angoro. Um, <laughs> no, and not another one. <laughs> I, I know, and I, I want to say I heard Ali Strauss <laughs> say that. And, you know, Rastakhan's Rumble, and that was... Those were the days of, like, Cube was still in the game, and I loved to play Hunter, so you could Cube, um, Crush, and then you could re-summon them with, like, Undasta, no, Undasta would pull the beast out of your hand, so you could have like crush after crush after crush, or Undasta could pull crushes, I don't know, it was just like, those were like the best hunter days, I swear, and um, I, I had the most fun around that time. Okay, good, good. And uh, do, do you have a favorite card from that set? Uh, Undasta, actually. I, actually, it was Undasta Rastakhan? Undasta was Rastakhan. I, I think Rastakhan and Angoro are kind of tied for me. Okay, good. And uh, if we just look about the art on the cards, um, which card do you think has the most beautiful art on it? Okay, I get asked this all the time and it's never what anybody thinks it's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> I love, some of you guys already know this, so it's cheating. I, I love um, Gromash. <gasps> um, yeah, My the gold card, <laughs> not not this, not the like standard art card. I like the gold one because it's just like I. My favorite book um, in the World of Warcraft lore is Rise of the Horde, and like learning about Gromash in that book because like Garrosh is so popular right now, but like Big Daddy Gromash, right? And like just the way they drew him, and with the the fire burning behind him behind him looks like super bloodlusty right and it started with him drinking first so anyway just a whole bunch of lore in that card and i love how it looks oh good but it's true that all the golden cards are a bit like they're they're, they're always a bit more uh <laughs> more nice and uh, a little it's bit more spicy, detailed spicy right like, yes it's, it's not i wouldn't call that that's, that's one of those cards that comes alive because it's gold i wouldn't say it's spicy before Okay, good, good, good. And so, um, so which uh, character did you get golden first? I never remember these or heroes. Or... I don't know. I I can't remember. But also for the longest time, and this will make some people in the chat happy. I was free to play, and I watched um, that disguised toast video about free to play from like rank at the time it was 25, to Legend. 
and like learned how to cannibalize my other classes and dust everything just to make like two strong classes. That's why Hunter was my thing. Um, and I, I was so poor in Hearthstone for so long that I don't even think I thought about gold cards. And if I had regular gold cards, I dusted them. Like I needed a competitive deck, you know? <laughs> So I think because I was in like this dusting phase for so long, I didn't even think about gold cards as having some sort of cool value. I don't know. Good. And as a hero, the first one you got uh, 500 wins with, it was Hunter? It was Hunter. Yeah, okay. definitely. Pretty sure. <laughs> If it wasn't Hunter, it would have been um, Paladin. Because also around that time, um, Osmodai was streaming the Four Horsemen Paladin, remember? With like Knights of the Frozen Throne and we had like the, um, uh, that version of Uther. And I wanted to play deck, that deck so bad. And that was the first deck outside of having my Hunter decks that I crafted outside of it. So it might, it could have been that one. <laughs> good, good. So you would say you're a Hunter main, right? Oh, I missed. I go back and forth between the two. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, me too. Uh, uh, Hunter from you is. I was Hunter Hunter main until uh, this year, where I decided to stop like playing Hunter that much and discover all the other class, and I've fell in love with priest unfortunately <laughs> yeah we all had our priest days like i loved um dragon priest back when duskbreaker was in i i loved that meta um and uh oh you guys don't hate me for saying this but gallery priest was so fun <laughs> oh my god yes no, I, i this year I, control priest was With 30 minutes game, it was my favorite. It was definitely my favorite. Every, everyone hated it, but it was so cool for content creation because like everyone is on the edge of their seat trying to see how it's gonna end. <laughs> yes, you know, I didn't, I'm kind of spinning here, but I didn't love control games until Nicolina told me um, that control games are, are amazing if you're a content creator because it really brings the audience like into a story tells the story and when she told me that i, I was on a quest to learn how to play control games um and uh i yeah i now have mad respect for control decks good good okay so if we go more into content creation a bit less about hearthstone um so so what was your first because I mean, we all know this is not a question. Like, it's it's definitely harder to be a female content creator. There's a lot of, like, barrier. And it's it's getting better and better. But, like, definitely there's there's some barriers. So what would you say were your first um, barriers in terms of content creation as a female creator? Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll probably limit that to, like, Twitch streaming content creation. Um, but it was definitely... I can just remember the early days of people wanting to be so helpful and in the beginning I embraced that too much because people were, uh, were and I was still learning all the technology and sometimes you'd have like little sound flips or you know I wouldn't know how to like move things around on the screen so it started actually with some technology barrier um, for me personally um, and that turned into embracing people helping which turned into chat thinking that they could help with everything which turned into, I had a very micromanagey chat in the beginning that sort of ended up getting a bit like, oh, she's a girl, she's a girl, she's a girl kind of thing. And, you know, being a girl and not understanding, I just never used all this equipment before. I didn't know, right? Had had no meaning to why I could or couldn't learn it, right? And I learned it very quickly. So the fact that I had developed this sort of chat in the very, very early days, thinking I would didn't have the potential was like, But they loved me, they loved my stream, but they just thought, I, I don't know how to describe that, but that was my very, very first barrier, was trying to get past the initial chat I developed and get past those people. And chat changes over time and, and you grow and it develops and you, and I had amazing people from the early days too that kept and thank you guys, I love you so much. They're still here. Um, but yeah, I, that's a weird one to say, but it, it's very common to think that 
you know, girls can't do it, or this isn't their thing, or sound's not their thing, or technology's not their thing. And it was true for me, it wasn't, but I learned really fast. Good, good. And um, so a question that I, that I, I asked to um, girls when they come on the show, well, I must say women more than girls, <laughs> um, is have you ever been worried that someone would like come up to your door like a viewer and just like, Hello. <laughs> oh, this one hits me hard. This one hits hard, you guys, because I did the cosplay stuff before streaming and it was bad. I I was doing the cosplay thing in like the big glory days of cosplay. You know, um, I like to talk Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3 a lot with Hearthstone. So similar with cosplay, I was like a Gen 2-er. So I came up after the rise of like Jessica Negri and Leanna Vamp and Yaya Han and all these huge names in cosplay. And I was, you know, Gen 2 where I was more accessible, right? You couldn't hardly get to these girls' booths. Like it would be just people everywhere. So people didn't want to wait in line. So like around the corner was us Gen 2ers, right? And so um, it, I, had a, I got popular very fast. And because I got popular very fast and and didn't put up maybe as many protections as I should have back then, I got the scariest, scariest people. I've had people follow me out to my car. I've had people find my address back when I've moved. I've moved. Um, and it was just, I've, ha I've had people come up to my booth and tell me personal details about myself that I'm, I just can't believe they knew. And if, if it can be, I've, I've just experienced the most scary possible. And it is so hard being a female in this industry. It's really, really hard being a mother with children because especially the time someone followed me out to my car, it was local and um, I actually, we waited until the event ended and like the crowds dispersed so that like the kiddos could come say hi to me because it was their first ever convention. And then it was like, saddened by the experience of we got followed all the way and I had my kids and it was just like I'm I'm always so scared that it's gonna continue like something like that's gonna happen again which is why you've noticed with Blizzard I'm Alkali Lake Blizzard calls me Alkali Lake like I I refuse to put more personal details out there and I I totally understand um that makes lots of sense um so That, that is definitely terrible, and I'm, like, I'm really sorry that this happened to It's you. It's scary. It's very <laughs> scary. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and so um, the, I, 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 I think you took a little break from streaming at, at some point. Was this one of the reasons you, you, you took a little break? Yes. Okay. That's a, oh my gosh, such a great question. And this gives me a chance to explain to people in chat. I did take a break and it's because I got the Blizzard commercial actually for Mercenaries. And I got um, informed about the commercial, I think in July. And um, at first I had like two weeks notice um, to make this costume for the commercial. And I was kind of going slow because I was redoing my original Valera and just kind of fi fixing some pop stitches and repainting some gold like because they wanted the original one. And then about six days in, they said, oh, by the way, <laughs> did you get the new key art for the game? And I was like, wait, what? And they're like, yeah, there's a new Valera. <laughs> Okay, so they sent me it and I'm thinking, oh, please, like, let it still be the shoulders, let it still be something easy I can reuse. The... No, it's totally different. So I had eight days to um, make her from scratch. So um, I just stopped streaming around that time. I was like, okay, you guys, I, I can't do this. And so I went crazy and I built her really fast and went to LA and shot the commercial. And that was, you know, a few days and then came back here and had a whole bunch of orders. because it was like right around Halloween time for my Etsy store and made 17, 18 Lady Loki corsets. And then right after I finished that, the job got posted for um, the community manager. And that was a really long process. So I just let everybody know. I was like, okay, I'll stream when I can. Sorry, you guys. So life just got crazy in a very, very, very good way. And would you say, thank you, that's super interesting. Uh, would you say that um, like do, taking that step was like 
because now it's like more of a conventional job that you have compared to like before so like it's it's kind of like a big change in your life how how are you like handling all this oh boy okay first of all <laughs> you that's such a good question too oh you're getting like you're you were good at this when you first started but now you're like you're really good at this um <laughs> so i have have never had a job like job 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 since like i was i have been self-employed since i was 19 um and i'm 37 that's a long time to be self-employed and i've had big jobs but i always worked for myself um and the good news is i always treated jobs like jobs and something i always tell content creators to do like this is your job like set a start time set an end time and even though I was always self-employed, I always had it like that. Um, and I've, I've had a lot of really cool jobs and a lot of great opportunities, but never like, you know, six, seven Zoom meetings a day, you know, having a lead <laughs> that I have to report stuff to. So that's probably the different part is like having a whole bunch of people around me that also depend on me. So the, the time and having to come to work and show up and all that stuff I've always done, even though I was self-employed. But yeah, have it, it's different having a team, I guess. No, definitely. And so so how's the structure? Like let, let's move a bit on into like the, the your yeah. new position. So how how's the structure works and like how do like yeah, just just a bit more about the structure. I think everyone is a bit interested in knowing like a, a bit more in details how it works and how like do you have like a, a, a set time for Twitter? <laughs> Do you have like a set time for Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> so actually, let me just mute my mic for just a second. I have a quick cough. Oh, uh, you're muted. Still. <laughs> Still muted. <laughs> okay, it's working. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Look, and I said I struggled with technology earlier in the show, and here we are again. <laughs> like, <laughs> this, this is why. Um, so I actually love this question, and you can fire as many of these as you want at me, um, because I personally be believe it's important to the community that they understand how it works, because um, I think if you guys understood how it worked, we would get less of, of certain questions. Um, <clears throat> And saying about how our little team works doesn't say anything about anything, right? So I can tell you guys this stuff. So we have a um, close knit, like five person team. There's a lot of us that do that come into making everything, but just with the people I interact with every day. And you guys um, know, I'll start with the one you guys know the most, which is Nick Deck Tech. Um, you guys see him a lot on social media. Um, and he is, he works with writing our content. So if you guys read patch notes and blog notes and things like that, um, he does a lot of that with Dylan. So there's Nick and Dylan, and that's primarily what they do. And then we have Kurt and Kurt is, um, our team lead and he's responsible for so much stuff. I don't even know. Like I've been there like two months already. I have no idea everything he does other than that. It's very, very important. And he's incredibly good at his job and he keeps all of us chickens in line every day. Um, and then there's Celso who is like wonder boy of so many things. He came over from our, um, la um community and he worked on the community team there and he is I guess, I guess I'll call him one of our tech wizards. He can do so much stuff. He works a lot on the launcher and in-game messaging. Um, and he really works closely with me with working with a lot of our regional CMs. So um, that's kind of how our team works. And as far as Twitter goes, you guys, just, just so you know, that's not my job. <laughs> that's extra. All the Twitter stuff that you see, all the stuff that I do, that's that's never been a part of the job. Um, it's just something that I personally like to do yeah, sometimes you'll see me all answer like tweets at work and stuff, but like I'm working on other things. Um, so Twitter's always been optional. Talking with you guys in a public facing way has always been optional. Um, we have CMs all over the world. Um, this is something else you need to know. We have a CM for, you know, EU, um, Latin America, Asia, Korea, Japan. We're all over the place, um, but not everybody chooses to be so active on the socials. So anytime you see me being active with you, making the TikTok, things like that, that's just because I want to do it. And I think it adds value to our community on top of what I do. 
Yes, and 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 it does hundred percent. Like I think I I I talk for the community saying that that you've been such a breath of fresh air. We love having you around. Uh, you you really did change the 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 community for the better. So I I want to thank you for that in the, on the behalf of the community, especially my community because we did talk about it before the interview. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, thank you, thank you for that. Um, okay, so it, it's good that we know that this is not like, this is not mandatory. Like, I I I I thought that th this would be like maybe some part of, of your job, but now like that, that you clarified that this is really like more up, up like above and beyond kind of like um, things you do. Yeah, and you know, I guess I should probably explain what I do also. So. Um, we all work on similar things in the community, and, and the short version is um, how does the com community feel about things? What's the community sentiment? What's the pulse on the community um, in response to things that happen from our design and development team? Um, and then as we see how it gauges and, and, and what we hear through the, the forums especially, and even Reddit, we kind of monitor everything. Um, we take that information back to the team. And I think it's important that people know that we don't have special buttons because we hear a lot like, why isn't this fixed or why isn't that? And it's like, well, we all be, we hear you. And it, it goes into our big we hear you, you know, bundle and we wrap it all up and tie it in a big bow. And, um, you know, and then our, our team who works on the game, you know, takes them as they can, right? They're very busy. They're working on the next expansions and, and, and they take off different parts of it and work on them as they go. And I think personally watching them work that they're so great at responding to things and it might not seem that way sometimes. But they are, and they hear, and they listen, and and um, tackle things as they can. So yeah, I, I don't have a button, you guys. I really sometimes you you say something needs fixed, and I'm like, oop, that's this button. But you know, it doesn't work like that. And then we 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 go back and forth and between community and the dev team, and that's kind of what we all do. But we all do it differently. And I primarily work in the relationships, so working with managing, not managing, but working with a lot of our our content creators. Yeah, and I, I do think you guys are doing a fantastic job. It's hard. It's a game. Like, it, for sure, there is bugs. It, it's normal. Like, and I think you guys are doing it quickly. And I think that a lot of people are a bit selfish in their, in, when, when they look at it, they're like, okay, my problem is this, and they're not fixing it. So that means they're not hearing us. But there's not just that problem, there's other problem. Like if you're in standard and there's a problem in battleground, maybe the team is fixing battleground. So there's like, there's gonna be like maybe a, a, a one more day before the other pr problem is fixed. So it's normal that everything is not like this. So I think you, you guys are doing a fantastic job. And um, I think that some people are a bit selfish in their problems. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And I, if I may, I want to say one other thing that the biggest thing I've learned since working at Hearthstone is that uh, for me, I won't speak on behalf of everybody, but I have a feeling, I have a gut feeling, you guys probably, once I say this, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, um, is English speaking um, people. We are very spoiled. We get a lot of our information quickly. Like I'm a CM who's very active on social and, and so, so is Nick. He's very active on social and Dylan's pretty active too. And we're always getting out information and a lot of it's in English. Um, and it means sometimes it takes a, a longer time for people in other who speak other languages to get information. And um, so that's the biggest thing I've learned from working here quickly is that we, we have to get information out to so many different regions. And so it's it's interesting, you're right, people are always focusing on the one thing that they have in front of them that's like, oh, I want this fixed, but it's like, this game is global. There's so many other people in other countries that have other issues, you know? And so sometimes we, we work on, it, it's just bigger, you guys. That's one thing I want everybody to know is it's like, I, for, I didn't really realize that about, you know, delivering the messages to other countries and how this all works. And I I have such mad respect for for how non-English speaking uh, creators have actually worked with me. They're more patient. It's amazing. And I wonder if they're more patient because they're used to sometimes getting the information a little bit later. And I actually want to send out like a special thank you to 
all my non-English speaking or, or non-English as a secondary language who send me messages because they're so kind. Whereas us like English speaking countries are like, oh, I want it now. <laughs> you know? so that, that's something that I noticed. <clears throat> Good. Um, okay. Well, thank you for clarifying that. Um, also, okay. So recently, like, I think it was last week, I read your, your tweet about um, people uh, from the community writing like terrible things to you. Uh, yeah. I was very, very shocked. I must say I was very, very shocked. Uh, like, so is it like more in direct message? Like how do these pe people like talk to you and like are able to do like mean things like that? Um, I, first of all, I, I think I'm fortunate enough that nobody's dared, right? Like, and I feel like they would get attacked because I have such a good community and, and Hearthstone community, like my personal community that I developed on my own, right? Like I came into this position with an already large social presence and these are amazing people who've always stood by me. So we've got that, like Tato Army, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we've got the Hearthstone community and, and I'm fortunate enough to be appreciated right now, which is lovely, thank you. So I just don't think any of these people at the moment have really dared. And that's not an invitation, you guys. But you know what? <laughs> If you want to attack me directly on social, go right ahead because Tato Army carries pitchforks. Um, but uh, so I've just gotten, and I, I won't share what they are, um, two two really um, hurtful ones, just, just two, and those are fine. And most of these, but a lot of the other ones are just like stupid stuff. Like, you know, I've, got, I've gotten hired you because you're pretty. I've gotten um, hired you because popularity contest. I've, I've gotten stupid, stupider stuff. So, and those are like a dime a dozen, whatever. Right? I don't even care about those. And every now and then you just get a couple that are like, ouch, ouch, man. And as it's a challenge accepted study. Sorry, I, I shouldn't reach out. Um, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but and none of them are from women, you know? None of these are from women or anyone who identifies as female. So that's, that tells you something. Yeah, but there must be troll, I guess, in, in that amount of people because, I mean, I, yeah, I, I must believe there's some, and there's probably some that actually thinks that, um, which is terrible to think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that maybe that's another thing as a female, <laughs> that we get compared to a guy. I, I doubt a guy would say like, you would get like, oh, because you're pretty, you were hired. <laughs> yeah, because pretty really has a lot to do with operating this job. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't helped me yet. Um, <laughs> actually, you should see me in Zoom meetings. Half the time I turn my camera off because I'm like, well, I, you know, I, I put on beanie, you know, when I wear sweatpants, like almost every single day, I'm, I'm pretty sure pretty hasn't helped me at all. I tell you what, <laughs> <laughs> that's so crazy to think about. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, good. Um, so do you think that, uh, you're going to continue, uh, being that, um, active on, on social media, even with the, the recent incident and everything like is, is it gonna stop you from from being active and present or you just you like you're just gonna continue and move forward absolutely so i mean social media is a tool right and um i just i hope i can continue to grow with blizzard um i know they've had their share of challenges but being being in on this team I can see a clear path of where I can go. I can see so much growth and development within this company. Um, and I can only see that no matter what I do, I mean, I, I have no like aspirations right now. Nobody get like, <laughs> nobody be like, oh no, she's gonna move on from giving me Mandarin. I'm like settled and happy. I, I love, 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 love my job so much. But let's say it does transition to somewhere else within, you know, I would want to maintain this voice, right? There's a lot of people um, who work for our team who are very active online. Um, we have uh, Dean doing his AMAs. Celestalon's always very vocal. So is Cora. And Cora, she's so yeah. 
funny. Her dad, who somehow works for the company, I don't know, he's got like a broom closet somewhere. Um, <laughs> <I can't... laughs> but uh, so yes, I will keep this up. Um, I can't say that I probably won't have moments, and I'll be vocal if I ever want to be about not being vocal. So like, I, I might even be like, hey, you know, you guys are a bit much this week. Gonna take some, you know, cave time and go hide out or something. So, um, yeah, I, I will always keep this, even though sometimes it's hard. Okay, good. And do you have a message for everyone that respond to your tweets and like, or interact? Like, do you have a message for these people like to, to do something different maybe, or to like tone down something else? Uh, I don't know. Well, first off, everybody that interacts with me, thank you, because it helps so much. Um, my socials turned in, into like, you know, retweeting DC Marvel stuff, you know, and like what or what the coolest new like uh, cinematic is coming. It turned into a lot of discussion around that into discussion around Hearthstone and now it's discussion around community. So it's always evolved. Um, and so when you guys interact, it helps a ton. Uh, if I had any like tips, it would be to not tag me all the time. It's funny because sometimes like someone like with a huge account will tag me. Like um, recently, I think I was tagged by uh, maybe like Cora and something and and then like I got tagged a whole bunch and it's like I, I see it the first time <laughs> you know like um so maybe don't tag me a bunch or maybe consider what I get tagged in um I have a really good pulse on the community like I look at reddit even though it's scary um <laughs> I I go every single day when I wake up I type in um Hearthstone in the search bar on Twitter I see what's top and then I look at latest and I'll go back like, I don't know, 12 hours or so on latest and I, I pour through it all. So I have, I know what's going on. So tagging me like constantly, like in the Encanter's Flow thing, for example. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm sorry. Um, but so I don't know, just maybe be aware, more aware of who to tag. Sometimes I see poor like Ixar get tagged in things that he has like, come on, you guys, like leave the guy alone. <laughs> So, um, yeah, or you know what, I, I I actually really like DMs. Sometimes it takes me a while to get back to them, but it's easier for me to like explain more, which I can't really do on Twitter in 140 characters. That's true. That's that's a very good, that's a very good point. Um, or I can like address their feelings more. Like I'm a people person, so I love saying things like, oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. Like I totally understand. Like I know where you're coming from. I've been there, you know, I get it. Thanks for bringing this to me. And that uh, that alone's 140 characters yes. just for me feeling sorry. You know? So if you DM me about something, I'm more likely to actually give you some time. And I don't mind it. I, I truly don't. Good, good. And um, if we talk a bit about the future of the game, I think that uh, lots of questions that uh, arise in the last few weeks is like what, how, what we're going to do as a community and Blizzard, Hearthstone to like to boost Hearthstone, to have more new player in, because we feel that it's like, like me, it's been like more than six years that I played a game. Like most people that I know, they're not like new players. They're like, it's been a while, they're established. The, so how are we gonna get new players in? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's a very I intense firmly, question, I know. It is, <laughs> um, and it makes me feel like, um, you kind of feel the weight on your shoulders a little bit. And not me, like our team, um, because we are really responsible for the community. And I probably feel it a lot sometimes just because I, I am so deep down in the trenches, as so to speak. But I have some ideas. I actually can't say them all here because like, I don't want to tease something that's not approved, right? And so I always have to be careful with like, I have these X ideas that are really going to help build the community. And you know what? So does, so does Dylan. So does Kurt. So does Celso and Nick. I always want to give them credit. They have amazing, amazing ideas. And we're on a team that's actually like, super progressive. And, and, and we, we think outside the box a lot. Um, leak it. Say one. Um, no, no, you guys. Um, things really do have to get approved and, and set up properly. That's the thing is like, if you just go brazen into let's do this or let's do that, you know, sometimes it's not set up correctly and it does take a while. So we're getting there, we have some ideas, but really to grow and bring new players in, I mean, most of the new player thing that's in game, that that's client, that's 
a lot of that, you know? Um, people usually find the game first and then they find the community. Um, I don't know that people usually find the community first and then the game. So chicken before egg stuff, I'm not sure. But either way, um, we can definitely keep people in the game longer if they enjoy the community. And that's one thing I'm trying to do is just have places for us. Um, and the first place, unofficial, I have to say unofficial, um, my official but unofficial Hearthstone TikTok is a fun place and I think sharing each other. So I got the first video launched yesterday and my <laughs> goal is to share. <laughs> share. I know, I know, I know you guys are talking about it. It's ridiculous. Um, no, no, but no. It's, <laughs> I, it, yeah. it's part of the question. Don't worry, it's coming. Okay. It's coming. <laughs> okay, it's coming. All right, all right. So the goal with the TikTok is to share you guys. I actually don't want to be that active on it. I'm terrible with coming up with this stuff. Like maybe one video a week I want to do. So I want to fill in the gaps on it with actually a bunch of reposts. So it's kind of a repost account, but that way um, people can just follow the one if they want. I mean, I'd love for people to follow other people through it, but a lot of people in Hearthstone from what I'm seeing on, on Twitter aren't really into TikTok yet. And so like um, if they could follow the one account and maybe start you know, convincing them slowly to follow some other ones. So um, I have a great uh, content creator that I'm gonna repost their video today and then another repost tomorrow. Um, and so I think when people see like, oh, you know, Hearthstone community cares, they care and they wanna share this video. I think the more you give back is how you grow. So um, it's actually all about you guys, the, the Twitter, I mean, the TikTok page. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, uh, I mean, the... <laughs> The rap was pretty funny, and I uh, I think that a lot of my my community community wanted to know when is the album is gonna is gonna be live. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, um, it needs to be I, on I Spotify. Think... <laughs> How about this? I'll, I will give you guys something. I have spoken with two people. We'll call this a collaboration album. So I've spoken with two people on the team that really want to work on the next rap. So, wow. yeah, yeah. One of them is, um, I can't say who it is, but I want to so bad. Oh, I'm <laughs> such a cool person. And uh, yeah, okay, so collaboration album, but we gotta, you know, we gotta work out our beats first because last time I didn't, you know, I didn't post any beats with it. Yeah. <laughs> Leaked. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's fine, and please don't feel edit. We, we don't want to leak anything. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, they just you know, there, there's someone saying they're gonna do it, and then there's actually doing it. So like I've got I've you know what I mean? Like I've got them this far, but like I had that video made for like six hours before I posted it because I was so scared. I was I was sitting there like. <laughs> right wanting to post and I, I couldn't do it my heart and I'm not I've, I've been on stages in front of thousands of people I've given speeches to thousands and thousands of people I don't I have zero stage fright like with stuff but posting that ridiculous rap on TikTok I was like sweating so <laughs> we'll see if I can get them to actually like do it <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's kind of really funny <laughs> I TikTok. TikTok is like suffocating scary to me. It is scary. I, I posted my first TikTok too uh, when the, the expansion launched with like the owl and like the game. And, and uh, yeah, I got lots of good feedback. But at first I was like, did I do it right? I'm not even sure. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's a bit scary. <laughs> And I'm gonna fall, I'm definitely gonna put myself into the category of like, uh, humor. Like, I'm gonna put myself out there in these, you guys, just so you know. I don't really plan on making like, here's the patch notes for the week. Like, I'm <laughs> planning these sequences. I wrote a whole script for me and Porter and I bought costumes. Ooh. So, nice. yeah, yeah, I don't know if we'll get them in time for the, the first patch notes I do, but, um, I, Porter's gonna be in at least one of the patch notes. And again, you guys, I, I wrote a whole script, so I'm really excited. Good, good. This is, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. He um, doesn't have any speaking parts though, I mean. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> that That is devastating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna get to the part where we talk about food. And <laughs> it's the, the part where everyone is 
very, very scared. <laughs> um, okay, so it's very, very basic, but for some reason, it stresses out everyone that comes on the show, the food part. <laughs> okay. I love food. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> so, coffee or tea? Ooh, both. Um, like, <clears throat> I have to have coffee every morning. And that's what you've seen me drinking because I was late today and I'm so. But I, yeah, coffee is um, my morning. And then I love tea at night. So, I drink a lot of caffeine free. And I have loose leaf tea and I have like a, this glass teapot and I steep it. I do it all properly now. I, I'm, I've become a tea mixologist. Ooh, so, nice. Yeah. I'll take like different loose leaves and I custom concoct them and put them in and yes, I, I am equally both. Perfect. Perfect. Me too. I love both. Um, okay. So wine or beer? Oh, dang it. Um, Something that you may not know about me is we are big hop heads here. So um, hops are grown in the Northwest. So my husband and I have been brewing beer for a long, 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 long time. Like long time, like 10 plus years. So um, we love beer, love, love, love it. However, as I would say it was beer, but as I've gotten older, I'm starting to get slightly allergic, I think. Um, and especially high, um, IBU IPAs, um, and, and really strong wheat beers will get me and I don't feel very good after having them. So I've actually had to switch to wine or, um, I have to be careful at like the beers I drink So I know that's another both of them. You guys see, I just love food. I love it all. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Okay. So do you like cheese? Yeah, I knew the cheese question was good. <laughs> I love cheese so much. I love every cheese. Okay, but I you need to love... pick one. If what? you could pick one. Only one. No, I didn't know I had to do that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> if you this could... is disastrous. Only um... bring one on a dessert island. <laughs> oh, shoot. Um... <laughs> Oh no, I'm actually at a loss. Um, <laughs> okay, you can do top three. <laughs> I don't have a top three. I have like a top 40. It's like, you know, top 40 list of, you know, music, but it's cheese on repeat. How about I just say the coolest one I've had recently? Okay, okay. good. good. My, <laughs> sorry. My husband did this beer and cheese night. How cool is this for a date night? And Amazing. he went to, yeah, and he went to this like specialty place and got all these specialty different beers and he paired them with cheeses and he talked with their cheese connoisseur. Yeah. Ooh. He's, he is not great at date night sometimes, but this one was like <laughs> number one. So we got this cheese and it was a um, mango um, Gouda, maybe? Weird. It was really odd, but it was so good. So I'm going to say it was this mango gouda. Amazing. I've never had mango yeah. gouda before. Yeah, me either. <laughs> was the color a bit more like um, orange? Uh, no. So the, the the way they cured it, I don't know. It wasn't um, mixed into the cheese. Like the On mangoes, top. you could see them. No, they were in it, but okay. they were like pieces. Ah, so, I see. and you got some sweetness in the actual cheese part, but that was what was nice about it is the cheese wasn't that sweet. So you would just get little surprises of sweet. Nice, 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 nice. Was it from the Netherlands? <laughs> you know, it, yes, actually it was, um, all these cheeses were from like different countries. And I want to say that that one was somewhere over there. Yeah, I can, uh, I can imagine since, uh, Gouda in the Netherlands, like the capital of Gouda. <laughs> oh, I, neat. No, I didn't know that. I did a, a Gouda tasting once. I had 30 kinds of Gouda. Was it Gouda? <laughs> <laughs> it was really like good. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think there was a mango one. There was lots of different kinds, but I'm not sure there was a mango one, which is which now I want to I wanna discover. <laughs> yeah. I have to find it. Send good, you the good. rapper picture. Good. And um, so do you cook? I cook. I love to cook. Um, I love to bake or or um, 
cook dinner, breakfast. I love to cook all foods. Good. And uh, if you order food from like Uber Eat or like um, DoorDash, what's your go-to? We don't. We don't order out from Never. Uber or well, okay, extremely another. <laughs> rare. <laughs> nope, we don't use it. Yeah, we're we are not. I, I talk about this all the time. We make almost all of our own food, and if we do eat something that's not our food, we go out. Okay, and if you go out, what's your go-to? Um, what is my go? A steak, I would say. Like, I want to go to a steakhouse. Um, because we actually don't eat a lot of red meat, um, at home. So when I go out, I'm always craving red meat. Okay, good, good. Um, and do you have a favorite dish? I love lasagna. And lasagna is one of my all-time favorite foods. So, you, would you say you were like a Garfield in another life? Yes, except <laughs> he always had olives. I had a Garfield puzzle when I was a kid of <laughs> lasagna and Garfield. And I remember... I could always put it together easily because of all the flung olives everywhere when he's eating it. And so I remember thinking, like, who puts olives in their lasagna? It's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually don't I've never had uh, olives in a lasagna. I know. <laughs> yeah, and as a kid, I thought that they were staples. Like, because I had this Garfield puzzle I put together, like, every day. Um, and as an adult, I'm like, that makes no sense. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Okay. Well, thank you. You you did great on the, on the food questions. Um, it's already over. What? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So um, so now we have question from chat. So I got I got some. So uh, if my moderator can send me some from while we were streaming, but I'm just gonna take the other sure. one. So. Um, So that's a question that we had before we were on. <laughs> okay. So the first question is funny, and I'm glad Zeddy is in chat. Oh, uh, Zeddy. Why have you not fulfilled the community manager tradition of blocking Zeddy on Twitter? <laughs> that's so funny. I feel like I have to make like an Alkali 2 account just to block him so I can fulfill it. Or maybe I need to block and unblock. I don't, I don't know, but... Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to shout out Zeddy for a second and say we we need all <laughs> elements of people in our community, right? A community doesn't consist of one type of person, right? And we we need our shouters, we need our loud people, we we need our adorable Regis's that have that fun belly laugh. I just love Regis and, and we need our Zeddies, right? And so I I am not blocking Zeddy. I will never block Zeddy. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Zeddy, don't do something heinous, please, so that I don't have to go back on that. Um, but we we are a community, just like a family, and every family has a crazy uncle, right? The dude that gets too loud at dinner, that's Zeddy. Um, and we have to have us all or we don't function, right? So I I love all of our peoples. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the answer. Yeah, but don't flame the dev, Zeddy. He, he knows he has some rules, and he's a. I mean, he's he's his own person. He can break him if he wants to. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, okay. So, second question. So, any idea on how to get more young girls into strategy games like Hearthstone, like chess, like board games? So, so I have an interest. Oh, sorry, I thought you were done. My bad. No, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Um, <laughs> I do have a theory on how we can get more women in gaming. Um, first of all, to get more women in gaming, they'll get more visibility. I think if they're competitive, you can't convince every single person to start gaming and and streaming. Right? There's there's people who play Hearthstone that we just don't know about that are girls that are great at it because they they're not content creators. So how would you ever know? So I think that getting them involved on a collegiate level is something that we need to approach more. We have collegiate esports programs for Hearthstone, and um, these teams are all primarily men. So I personally, like, we have a, I, I live in the Boise area, we have a Boise State Hearthstone team. And I would love to, like, go down to the... Um, college and, and talk to them and, and maybe talk to some, like, have a 
open Hearthstone Day and and talk to women on campus. And I think starting on 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 a collegiate competitive level could be a great way to get more women involved, which also increases visibility because those games are cast. Um, and so I think that's something that we need to explore more. Um, and then that way we're opening women into our competitive scene um, in a different kind of space. And yeah. that's just my first thought. That's the first one. There's a, there's a bunch. Okay, good. Yeah, like, for example, me, I was playing Hearthstone for six years. I didn't know there was a community. I never talked to anyone about... I was pl I would play alone, having zero friends. Every time I would have, like, challenge a friend quest, I would, like, delete it <laughs> and, like, wait for another quest. Me uh, too! <laughs> <laughs> and I was a closet People. gamer. I was a closet gamer for the longest time. My... When I told my friends I would like start streaming video games, they were like, well, will you play video games? <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, I oh, felt like yeah. a shame. <laughs> well, and then like I'm I'm in like the mom club, right? And I've never fit in. I have never fit into the mom club because they all like read books in like coffee shops and talk about them or something and I <laughs> like I just can't do it right and so I, I I don't know it's just like there's there's we're all different kinds of people right and I've always just felt more comfortable going to my comic cons and hanging out with my gamer friends and I just I don't know <laughs> so I was always like that too like I would get like a challenge request and I'm like no no or oh the local feature I would always turn off, like, you could find out, you could make yourself shown to, like, local people around you. And I was like, who wants to do that? <laughs> but now that I've grown in the game, I do want to. But it takes a while. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And um, so related to, like, personal life, for example, because, like, how much do you think content creator, uh, especially female content creator, should share about their life? And because, like, I've been quite private about my my life um because i'm very i'm i'm definitely worried that someone is gonna be at my door one day uh, i do say where i live like in the city so everyone knows that but um i do keep some some of the of the things private and so i i think it would be good to have like your input on that like what should we share what shouldn't we share uh is it help, helpful to share or <laughs> like, where's the line? Number one, it's helpful to share. I, I'm going to say that, but I'm going to say it with a guarded response in that you have to protect yourself. You do. Um, so if you have an alias like you do, Heart Queen, keep it, you know, and, and put up your, your lines. Um, Someone found me once because I had a website and I was the registered owner of the website and you can you can research registered owners of websites. So make sure that's not your name. Put it in your husband's name if you're married or or something. There's a lot of protections you can do. I can talk to you more about that off stream of a whole bunch of things that people can search. Um, but um, like especially with uh, like, let's just say Slissa getting pregnant. Like, I think it's great she's sharing that. It, it shows women that you, we can we're multifaceted you can and me being a mom with two kids I was so afraid to say that for so long I only shared that in February of 2021 um it took me that long to get it out there but I realized I was holding people back I was holding women back by not sharing it because there's so many moms out there like I've seen a mom in a doctor's office while waiting for one of my children's doctor's appointments and she was playing Hearthstone on her phone and I was like what ah, ah! and we had a moment and it's like more women would know that it's okay if you know, to be a mom and play, to be a girlfriend and play, to be, you know, pregnant and play, nursing and play someday. I don't know, you know, just like, <laughs> we're just humans doing human things and it, it it will let more women feel comfortable. So I believe in sharing as much as you feel comfortable with, um, but no, nothing personal where people can find you. So it's like, you can say you're married, but not your husband's name, you know? You can say you have kids, but if you not share your kids, unless you want to, right? Like, I don't feel comfortable with it, but I can say if I could go backwards in time and if I could share the early stuff, like back when I was doing cosplay and trying to fit into all these tiny little things and having this workout routine and then having like, little baby at home right like I had babies at home and and I was like 
working so hard to take care of them and and raise them and then work out to be physically fit for these costumes and how great would it have been if I would have shared that instead of like looking like this unattainable thing that you know it has to be in the gym 40 hours a week which I wasn't um and letting them know like no I just up and down the stairs carrying two babies all day right and like th that's my workout routine and you know playing with them running around the house and and i think that that inspires women more than anything is just being real good thanks for sharing um okay and so about age because i like i mean i i didn't want to share anything about my age until recently where i decided to 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 tell my age. I, I, I was a bit worried that people would say that I'm too old to play video games. Uh, and so I, like, I think it was like last month that I shared my age with my community. Um, and I'm 30 years old. So um, I, uh, and everyone was a bit shocked. Everyone thought I was like 21. <laughs> um, and so is it like, a, do you think it's, it's like, it's a problem? And do you think, uh, like, <laughs> what do you think about age and sharing age? <laughs> so there's there's all sorts of gatekeeping, right? And ageism is a real thing. And so the reason I didn't share my age in cosplay, which is why I just didn't share it for so long. By the way, I started cosplay when I was 29, you guys. So I was always like, I'm in my 20s, right? And that's all I said from the very beginning was I was in my 20s, <laughs> kind of. Um, and so then that that made everybody think I was always in my 20s. Um, and I looked really young. And so if I said I was in my 30s, that was ages, ageism is rampant in the cosplay community. Like the minute you, they find out that you were, it, it just, I, I needed to book shows, I needed to book jobs and, and there's always somebody and, you know, you're, sometimes you're put on their billboards or you're put on their promotional materials. It's just a different space. And knowing that that's where I started is different. So I was, crazy afraid of ageism affecting my ability to get hired in book shows and then you know i announced my age when did i announce my age sometime i mean everything happened in 2021 for me i i said i had kids i officially said i was married which i never said i was before um i said my age all these things because i just stopped caring because i realized i was in a sense gatekeeping the community by not saying these things. Cause then women all over are like, oh, she's 20 something or she's this, right? Or she's early thirties, it doesn't. But to say like I'm 37, which is such a scary number because it's late, you know, like 37 to 39 is late thirties and it's so scary to say. Um, but like that tells women it's okay. Like I am so much more into sharing now because like imagine how many women prior to that were like, I can't do it because of this. And, and I am gatekeeping. And I hadn't thought of that before. Good, good. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy to know like where's the line on sharing um, personal information. In yeah, it's it's all about just just know that the more you include, the more you're being inclusive, um, because other people feel like they can. Um, but again, it is it's personal, so you just have to decide where your lines are. Okay, good. Um, okay, so next question. Does Al Kelly miss her, all her loyal tattoos? Oh, potatoes. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was going to stream this weekend, um, and I'm not sure if I can fit it in today, but I'm, I'm still going to do the occasional streams. I did tell everybody to stop subscribing because I felt bad. I don't want to keep taking their $5 every month. Like, And some people are like, no, I still just want to give it to you. And I'm like, I have a job now. Like, I'm okay, you guys. Like... I can pay my bills now. It's great. I mean, I could before, but like, it's, it's easier. <laughs> like, so, um, keep your $5, you know, give it to a smaller creator. Please, 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 please give your sub to a smaller creator. I will stream here and there to support the loyal Tatoes. It's, it's now, I don't want you guys supporting me anymore. I want to support you. So I'll stream and say hi to the Tatoes. I'm going to shoot for like twice a month. So I'm, I'm hoping maybe today we'll see. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> How can we still be in the tattoo army? <laughs> oh, the, <laughs> so um, I'm actually rebranding right now. This is a great question to ask me because um, I'm switching to just alkali because the lake was too um, 
complicated. So I've switched all the tags, like the nicknames to my accounts to just Alkali. It's gonna take a longer process to get the lake off of there. Um, and uh, then that's gonna go, I'm still gonna keep my YouTube. So Tato Army will live on YouTube and I'll still be doing like cool props and stuff. And especially, um, once 2022 starts, I'm going to be starting a big cosplay, um, something to do with an upcoming expansion, you know, and I'll probably start building little things that, you know, won't say what things are um, if I can. And then um, so people will still feel connected. And then um, I, I'm allowed to stream like YouTube live still. So there's there's a whole bunch of things I can do to still, you know, get out there a bit. Good. Good. And uh, <laughs> can she add Tato Army emote as a follower emote so we can all <laughs> use her emote across Twitch? <laughs> oh, what? Wait, how do you do that? So now there's a follower emote. Oh, see, I'm, I've been so far removed from this. <laughs> like, I'm like, what is this? Yeah, yeah, Tato Army should be a thing. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll look up how to do that and I'll I'll fix it, you guys. Happy to support the Tato army. <laughs> um okay, I'm not I'm not sure I wanna say this question. Let me just jump to the other one. Um <laughs> with Alkali working for Blizzard now, does that this mean she won't be available for meeting fans at BlizzCon anymore? Oh no, I had a whole dream like two nights ago. I had this whole dream that we had like this big BlizzCon meetup and um, I like kind of like I did before we did it on the stairs at the last one. No, like, I mean, of course I'll have to, if it's BlizzCon, I'll have to work it, right? And I'll, I'll be working a lot, but there's after hours events too. So 100% if there's a BlizzCon in person again someday, like we will have an alley meetup and I, I, have, I have to meet you guys. That's the thing is it's not like, it falls into my need category and and I, I need to be around you all and, and I love that part. It's my favorite part of being at conventions. Um, and then uh, TwitchCon I'm planning on for sure. So if anybody wants to go to TwitchCon, um, I'm, I'm trying to do both. I don't know if I can do Amsterdam and the US one, but I'll definitely be at the US one. Good, good. And uh, are you going to go to TwitchCon too? Yeah, TwitchCon. TwitchCon okay. and, and BlizzCon. If, and if BlizzCon. I mean, okay, yeah. yeah. Pen pending BlizzCon's pending. I don't know, you know, um, and then TwitchCon is official. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. But I I, I really wish there's gonna be a BlizzCon next year. <laughs> After I hope so. We all hope so. Yeah, that would be really cool to like meet people in real. <laughs> it's my favorite convention of all time. I've never had more fun than at BlizzCon. I'm excited for the next in-person one. <laughs> Yes. Good. Um, does chat has any more questions? We still have five minutes. Um, I'm here for it. Whatever you guys want. I mean, what I mean, like, once I got going, once I got my coffee, I'm like all charged up. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. So, uh, and feel free not to answer this question, but I'm still gonna gotta tell you the the one I skipped earlier. Okay. Uh, how are we going to return old player streamers like Alistraza and Patra? <laughs> oh, well, so first off, that I mean, they're they're individuals, you know, and individuals just burn out sometimes and they need to change interests. And I've spoken with like Ali a bunch of times and you just interviewed Ali. She yes. still loves Hearthstone. There's no hate for the game there. She's just trying something different. And Patra is just Gosh, she's just such a wonderful woman. Like, I cannot say enough good things about Pathra. I've messaged her too and let her know, like, I just miss you. If you ever want to come back, let me know, of course. But I, it's beyond that, I support her in whatever she does, you know? So do I want them to come back to Hearthstone? Yes. But the feeling that's greater than that is do I want them to be happy in what they're streaming? Yes, way more. Because, you know, you can tell a player that who's not happy playing the game. So they just need space, right? Like, and, and people need, need their space and the people need to respect that. And, and you know what, continue to support these streamers because they, just because they don't play our game anymore doesn't mean they don't need our support. So I hung out in Ali Straza's stream for like an hour, I think yesterday. She was doing 
chatting. I'm like, ooh, yeah, just chatting. And we asked questions and hung out and it was great. So keep supporting these content creators, even if they're not in our game, because they might come back someday and they need us. Yes, that, that's why I was is it of asking the question because oh, it's okay. I Good feel question. that like it's yeah, it's not related to Blizzard. It's more related to people want to try try new things and just it's it's like someone changing job. <laughs> it's just like to get new challenges and to to discover themselves. It's not just related to the game, anyways. So uh, yeah, so yes, but thank you for answering. Uh, so sure. <laughs> Zeddy is asking a question about who worried better at the Zeddies. <laughs> oh man, Zeddy! <laughs> First of all, this is not a competition, but if it were, <laughs> oh man, uh, Nova, Nova wore it better. How about that? <laughs> so it better. Good, I like it. I like it. In the you know, birthday suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I this is what I like about Zeddy is he just kind of threw something at me like and I said, "Hey, I think I might do this." And then he was like, "Great." And then he sends me this thing. I think and I I'm doing this and I'm like, and he doesn't care what I do. At first I was going to like wear a gown. I'll just tell you guys some behind the scenes info. At first I was going to wear a gown and put out some like red fabric I have and pretend I was like accepting a, like a red carpet award and you know uh and then I changed that and then I was gonna do like a box and a box and a box unwrapping thing to try to get to the award and then it was gonna be like gum wrappers in the bottom or something like <laughs> he just doesn't he's so cool to let me do whatever I want to do and he was such a great sport through that <laughs> good good um so there's a question about cosplay so How much time did you take to make your Dr. Boom cosplay? I first discovered you there and I loved it. Thank you. Um, so that was on a time crunch, unfortunately. So I didn't get to make it how as good as I would want to. So I think it was like three months um, of cramming. Like, I mean, that's all I streamed for months. Um, and uh, if, if I were to do it again and I could do it perfect how I would want to do it, it would probably be about a year. So that's the difference between cramming and just getting it done, right? So yeah, three months of, some of those were like, I didn't sleep um, to try to get it done on time. <laughs> wow, thanks. Uh, Zeddy, thank you for redeeming Victory Dance, but I, we're not gonna dance. <laughs> not gonna... What? Why not? <laughs> you wanna let's dance? together. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> oh my God, okay. <laughs> How do we do it? Hold on, I don't have your camera. Wait, 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 wait. I don't, I don't, I can't see your camera. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me fix this. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know what kind of dance we're gonna do. Um, I thought, let me put some... I can't dance, but I can just kind of like shimmy. Yeah, that's little, good. Little that's little alkali good. shimmy. Let, that's good. Let me just put, uh, what, what, like a, a royalty free dang dance song? Oh, wait, oh, wait, no, I already did it. Okay, dang it. I gotta do it again. <laughs> okay, no, we need to do it to get together. I'm not there. I'm not there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> are you Are you there? Are you up? I I'm up. I just can't see you. Wait. I wait. Hold on. The problem is we don't have our cameras. We're gonna be off, you guys. Okay. <laughs> you can just tell. Wait. Just say go. Okay. Go. Okay. Go. <laughs> All right. We're dancing. But I just shimmy. I'm just like a shimmy. No, right? that's good. Right? That's good. <laughs> Or we can get crazy. Pretend that there's like some rocker music on and a headbang. <laughs> and some kicks, some <laughs> kicks, kicks, <laughs> I'm not kicking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for doing it. Oh yeah, sure. Zeddy sure. made, made you dance. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, I just, I told myself like, I'm going to get into, I'm going to let no situations like this make me uncomfortable. Like with TikTok, right? Like I'm just gonna put myself out there and do it. Cause I was thinking like, I, you know, my new thing is what would Ben Bro do, right? <laughs> Because he was so energetic and brought so much life to this community and we've been missing that. And so I'm like, I'm just gonna do it. Like if something like this comes up, I'm just, I'm, I'm here. What do you want? Is it a hot Cheeto challenge? Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, no, the, because the dancing thing is something 
that I do on my channel. People redeem that and it's uh, with channel points. And it was I just at, it. at first to be funny. I did it like my first week on Twitch. I was like, what should I put? And it became like the trademark of every stream. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> Someone said, imagine wearing real pants. Like I actually had a feeling I would, I might have to wear pants. I don't know why. So, and like these I wore the other day and they don't match. I, I do not match right now. It's like yellow and pink, but whatever. I just, I, I needed pants and I knew that. I was like, I should not wear the dirty, crusty, sweatpants that I've been putting on every single day for like the last week. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, thank you so much for uh, answering all, all the questions and being there today. Uh, we really appreciate that. And um, thank you so much. Thank you, Heart Queen. Thank you, chat. Thanks, community. Love you all. Heart. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks.